Hey guys, Assalamu Alaikum. In this video, we'll be looking at the next data structures, tuples and sets. In my previous tutorial, you may remember us working with lists and applying some list methods. Tuples and sets also kind of work like lists. However, they have their own unique ways of storing and managing data. So let's start with tuples. Now this data structure is just presented by normal brackets, which take in items of any data type. So you can see that I have a tuple called box that stores in chocolates of different flavors, dark, white, and strawberry. Now this looks a lot similar to a list, but a list instead contains items within squared brackets. So we can fetch items from tuples much like how we do with lists. If I wanted to get dark chocolate, for example, then I'll specify its index position 0 in the slice notation, and by running the program, we'll get dark printed out to the console. All right. So slicing tuples is possible since they are known to be an ordered collection of items, just like lists. So our items here would have their own indices in order, starting from 0 and ending at index 2. So I can slice tuples in any way, even a range of items. Fetching the last two flavors here will get white and strawberry printed out in the console. Cool. So this should be pretty straightforward given that you may have already seen how to slice lists in the previous video. Now tuples are known as an immutable collection of items. So immutable here means we cannot add or remove items inside tuples. And this feature could be quite useful in many ways. Say we'd like to keep a variable consisting strictly of our three flavors here. Then a tuple is the way to go. They also provide some efficient workarounds for generating dictionaries or multiple arguments for functions. Now you may not be familiar with dictionaries since I haven't talked about them in the previous tutorials. It's another data structure used in Python and I'll be talking about them in the next video. So now that you have an idea about tuples, let's try defining a tuples restrictions by modifying our box of chocolates here. Say I want to remove the flavor white. We can try this out by using the delete keyword before the specified tuple index for white. By running the program, we'll get an error that says delete doesn't work with tuples. Okay, mission failed. Time for plan B. Let's try replacing an item within our tuple. Maybe replacing strawberry here with caramel. Then I can assign the sliced position for strawberry to caramel here. And by running the program, you'll see that we get an error again. Now saying tuples don't support item assignment. All right. So you can see that no matter how we try to modify a tuples items, we're not able to do so, proving that they are immutable. The best that I can think of for removing their elements is by specifying the number of items you'd like to keep with the slice notation. So this cheap workaround excludes out my last item, for example, the strawberry flavor, leaving us with the first two items. All right. So I call that a cheap workaround since we're not obviously removing any item from the tuple. Just slicing out a smaller range of items for our tuple. Alrighty. It should go without saying that tuples don't have built-in methods for adding or removing items. They do, however, have two methods, which can also be used on lists and strings. We'll start with the count method. So this one takes in a tuples element as a parameter and basically counts the number of occurrences of your item inside the tuple. Say I try counting dark in our box. Printing this out shows that there's only one occurrence of the dark flavor. Sweet. The next method is called index, which also takes your tuples item as a parameter and returns the starting index of that item. So if I typed in strawberry here and print this out, we'll get two returned since that's the index position of strawberry in our tuple. Awesome. So that's pretty much it on tuples that I wanted to go over in this video. You'll see some really cool use cases for them in my future tutorials. We'll now be moving on to sets, the next data structure. Now sets are simply defined as a collection of items inside curly braces. So just going with the same chocolate flavors here, by using the curly brackets for this collection, we've now defined a set. And let's print out our set along with its data type. By running the program, we'll get our set of chocolates in the console, along with its type class set. Awesome. The main characteristics of a set are it doesn't take in duplicate values, and it's known as an unordered collection of items. Unordered here means that we cannot slice out items from sets. 
So if I tried slicing out dark here, for example, running the program shows an error saying that the set object is not subscriptable. So slicing a set is completely out of the picture. And not only that, if I say kept a duplicate value of an item inside our set, say another white flavor, our set box will check for duplicates and will convert to a collection of unique elements. By printing this out, you'll see that although we can read our set here with two white flavors, the set actually just kept the three unique flavors inside it. Awesome. Now let's go over some built-in methods for sets, so you can add or remove items inside a set. A simple way of adding an element inside our set is by using the add method. So if I wanted to add a new flavor inside our set, maybe caramel, I can simply add in caramel inside the add method here, and by running the program, you'll see that caramel gets added into our set. Pretty simple. Another way of adding items inside sets is by using the update method. This method basically updates our set with its union of another set or iterable, and then adds the unpacked items of that iterable to our set without order. So in a way it kind of works like the list method extend, but with an added feature to not include duplicate values in our updated set. So let's use a parameter with a list containing chocolate flavors, vanilla, mint, and white. You can see that this list has a duplicate value of our set, which is white. So in our updated set, only unique items are kept, and there will be one instance of white. By running the program, you'll see that we get an unordered set with more flavors now. Awesome. Let's keep working with our new set here. Alright. So let's go over some methods for removing items from sets. One method is to use remove, which also works the same with lists. By specifying an item inside remove, say vanilla, this will simply remove vanilla from our set, as you can see in the console here. Cool. Another method called discard can remove items the same way, by specifying our item inside it. So if I'd like to drop out mint, running the program then shows that mint has been discarded from our set. Now the difference between the methods remove and discard is when it comes to removing an item that doesn't exist inside our set. So in the case of remove, if we use the flavor honey that isn't inside our set box, running this shows that we get an error in the console. If I however used discard for the same item honey, running the program then shows our same set printed out. Basically discard doesn't throw an error for any invalid item used as a parameter. It will just leave our set unchanged. Sweet. For the last part of this video, I'll mention some methods that can be used for comparing sets, or a set and an iterable. So let's say you wanted to see the difference between items of two sets. Say I have another set called Shakes, which contains different flavors of milkshakes, vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, I'll just call it choco, cookie, and maybe also mint. Now you can see that we have some common flavors between our sets. There's actually a method for finding common elements between them, and it's called intersection. So you can apply intersection on one set, with this method's parameter being the other set, as you can see here. I'll assign this to a variable new set, and then we can run the program. You'll see that the flavors vanilla, strawberry, and mint are common between the two sets. Awesome. And it wouldn't have mattered if you switched the orders to shakes.intersection box we'd get the same thing in the console. Cool. If you wanted to see the difference of elements between the sets, say I'd like to check which flavors are inside box that are not inside shakes here, I can simply apply the method difference. So this expression here will do the job. By running the program, we'll get white and dark printed out, which tells us that these are the flavors not contained inside shakes when compared to our box set. If I switch the order of sets here, now trying to check which elements are not inside box, but are inside our shake set. Running the program shows the flavors Choco and Cookie that aren't inside box when compared to shakes. Sweet. So this is pretty much it about sets that I wanted to cover for this video. And there are many beautiful use cases for sets just as there are for tuples or other data structures and programming tasks. There are more methods that can be applied for sets. I have mentioned a W3Schools link in the description below 
where you can check out the full list of methods for sets. Alrighty. And that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope this video helped you gain knowledge on how to work with tuples and sets. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like or a subscribe, and stay tuned for the next tutorial, which will be about the next data structure, dictionaries. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and assalamu alaikum.